last time we were here, we had set up the Amazon Developers portal. That was last week, Tuesday. And then we started our listing, our store listing on Tuesday. And then by Thursday, we had our store listing all set up. We had submitted our app, many of us. And uh, perhaps very soon or sometime over the weekend, you might have gotten an email alert saying, congratulations, your app is live. So that's what happened with me. I got a submission live message. And now my app is out there for real for people to, to download and install on their, on their device. If I go look at Amazon.com, I'm not logged in. I'm just going to go to plain old Amazon.com and I search my SDCE. It'll pull up a bunch of the work of various students, even from this class. Uh, I see Adriana's app here. She's not here so we can embarrass her, but uh, she made her app here. And who else? Um, uh, Jay Smith. Oh, that one's mine right there. Mia is uh, right here. So people's apps are live. If you went this far to actually. Um, uh, publish them right here. Uh, so I'm just showing the uh, the different versions of, of of the app there. So if you did publish your app, then um, it is available. As we said previously, then that oh right here we forgot to remove a few of these permissions. Well, that'll be for version 2. But um, we've got this app, and we talked last time about MVP, minimal, minimum viable product. We were at a point where we had our app, and it was ready to go. Uh, we uploaded it, <coughs> and people can actually download it and use it. But most likely, there's going to be a, a uh, 2.0 version very soon there will be because we've got some new features that we're going to add to our app actually so whatever our app currently is well we need to start we need to start working on a version 2.0 so if you didn't get a chance to publish your app that's okay we're still going to move forward with your app and add new features and then if you'd like you can publish your app this ultimately this part of the class about publishing the app is optional but uh, if you do manage to do it it's the full process isn't it so I'm seeing on my on my portal here it is my app is live if I go look at my screen of apps there's the dashboard and there's apps and it shows that my current app is live it was originally in progress and then submitted and then now it's live so eventually what we need to do is edit add new features and we'll see that then what we will do is we will add an upcoming version. We will add a version 2.0 very soon. So I've got my project uh, in my flash drive, my, my app up to this point. I want to do several things. Uh, one is that I want to make the ability for people to use Pouch dependent on the person's device. Our app works best on Android 4.0 and up. The pouch specification, if we look it up, it's it works best for and up. Currently, uh, Android 6 point whatever is out at the moment. 7 is coming very, very soon. So we're targeting a few versions back. And there is some market share, very small now, but there's some market share of people that are still using Android 2. Android 3 was like a weird offshoot. It was more for tablets. But everything now is basically four. Now there's still going to be some people that have an older device and maybe want to download our app. Pouch won't really work. And so we should address that. We should address that with a little bit of versioning, version checking and such. So we'll write a little code. Uh, this will be Cordova-based code so that we can deter detect features of the device. Based on those features, then deactivate what the user can't use. So we have a Cordova API that will help us do that, that will help us understand everything about the particular device. 
that your app is running on. So I'll take a quick look at cordova.apache.org documentation. And the documentation is the plugin known as device. We played with that a little bit when we first started to look at Cordova coding, Cordova API. So if I go look at Cordova uh, device, and it goes on uh, installing it, of course, and we can check these various things. What version of Cordova do we have available? The model of the phone, the platform, its unique identifier, version of Android, the manufacturer of the device. Is the device virtual? That seems to be a new one. I remember seeing that one in older versions. And then serial, so the serial number of the device. Knowing these sorts of things like serial number can help us customize our app. So what I want to do is uh, basically uh, version, device.version, so jumping down here to version, get the operating system version. It's basically device.version. We should capture that in some sort of variable. Once we know that, then we can make decisions like loops and conditional statements. Uh, so the example goes on to tell you some possibilities that you might get from requesting the device version. And it's pretty straightforward. So we're going to get back to our project, our project folder. Let's go ahead then to the WW folder. This is JavaScript, so we'll need to open the Kodika.js file. Go ahead and edit the Kodika.js file. This is one of the first things we want to do. We want to be able to check if uh, this capability of, of using uh, Pouch is available as soon as possible to be able to deactivate it if necessary. So in the project, you'll see on the home page, we have my classes. This whole feature does not really work with Android 2 and 3. So perhaps one of the easiest ways is to simply hide that button. Not really delete the code, that'd be more complication, but uh, hide the button so it's no longer accessible by users that have Android 4, I mean, uh, you know, 3 and lower. So in our code, the first thing I want to do We've got a splash screen that we hide once the Cordova APIs have all loaded up. I want to set this up before the splash screen is hidden. So we've still got that console log Cordova ready hanging out. Well, I guess we'll leave it alone. We'll make some space before hiding the splash screen. I want to hide that button and then hide the splash screen. I don't want that button to be visible for a moment and then it goes away. People say, where did that button go? What was that button? We'll make it disappear <coughs> before the splash screen. Let's create a variable. Let's call this Android ver. I'm going to check the Android version. I'm going to store that as a variable. So then we'll set that to equal and simply device object dot version property. We're requesting the device's version property, storing it in a variable. And it's going to give it to us just right off the bat, um, we can do console.log, oops, not a dot there, semicolon at the end, and then Android ver. So run that so we can see what sort of result we get. I'm going to display that, the contents of that variable. I need to open up my uh, command prompt. And I'll just do taco run browser. Better result, I think, would be in um, uh, in uh, the virtual device or the real device. I just want to see what sort of output it gives.
Okay, here it is. So the splash screen is still running. Um, let's simply output it to 52. So this is Google Chrome version 52. Uh, if this were on a real device, I would say like Android 5.56, whatever. Uh, and if it was on an older device, like Android 2.3, it would output that. Well, we really uh, need to deal with the version number in a bit of a simpler way because the whole any version of 2x will not work. Any version of 3x will not work. Any version of 4x will work. So we will simplify the number uh, down to a whole number basically. So actually, at the end of line 9, I won't finish that line yet. I'm going to delete the semicolon. I'm not done with that statement. I'll put a comma and then on the next line I'm going to create another variable. So my comma will allow me to use the var more than once. So Android ver int. I want it as an integer, as a whole number. The equals parse int. I'll terminate the line there. Um, parse int is a JavaScript method which will parse a value to turn it into an integer to a whole number. Well, what we need to parse is Android ver. And we want it under base 10, so that'll be comma 10 radix is 10, base 10. So take whatever big number that is, simplify it down just to a whole number, an integer. We don't need to know down to the sub-version of the operating system. We just need to know the whole number of the operating system. If I run that... Oops, I forgot to say console log output. Before you run it, uh, if you'd like to see the result, don't forget to do a console log output. I'm going to do both the full version and then the integer version of it. There we go. So it took the the big version number, just simplified it to 52. And it's a number. Uh, technically that's a string, this is a number. So that's going to simplify if someone's got Android 2.2.3. It'll just simplify it to 2. We just need to know the whole number of the operating system. Based on that, now we can make some decisions. We can do introduce some logic. Um, an if-else statement would work pretty well. If it's a certain version of Android, allow pouch. If it's the wrong version of Android, don't allow pouch. So on the next line, we'll start an if-else block. We're going to check if Android ver int greater than 4. If it's more than 4, if it's higher than version 4, then allow pouch. But wait a minute. When us as people would think about this, well, I want to include version 4 
and 5 and 6 and 10. So this literally will be 5 and 6 and 7, etc. Because 5 is greater than 4. 6 is greater than 4. 4 is not greater than 4. 4 is equal to 4. And the computer treats it as is. So 4, version 4, we would be accidentally leaving out version 4. So we want equals, we want greater than equals. So now we're saying greater than or equal to 4. So if the operating system returned Android for int is 4.2, that'll count. 4.0, that'll count. Remember, we're rounding it up anyway to 4. If it's 3, well, 3 is no longer greater than 4, so it would fail. 5 would be greater than 4, so it would work. Uh, here, then, we will just give ourselves some console output, because the project will work. We will say uh, OS greater than 4. And I'm going to move over now to the else part, because here we, we, we assume that the operating system is compatible, so the button will display. So nothing that meaningful happens on the if part, the success part. The meaningful part happens on else. If we have the wrong version of the operating system, we'll hide that button. So we need to go look up on the on the index file, we most likely have some sort of unique reference to that button in the HTML. Right here, there's the My Classes button, and it has an ID, BTN Classes. So we can use that as a reference to deactivate that feature. Um, so via jQuery, we will reference BTN classes. That's the button that sets up the whole top system. Don't forget the pound sign because it's an ID. And then we'll simply use the, uh, uh, the, the very simple but powerful jQuery.hide method. That's like setting something as display uh, hidden in CSS. So this will hide an element. It's going to hide the button. There's no way to be able to get to that screen of adding classes. It still exists, but now it's deactivated. So here I know what will happen, but if I run it, it's checking, and I've got version 52. 52 greater than or equal to 4? Yes. So the button is still there. If I want to artificially test, does this really work? Well, I'm going to put something outlandish here. I'm going to say Android version greater than 99. I've been seeing that my operating system version that it's returning is 52. So here, I'm going to purposely put a very high number just to see, does this work? There is no Android OS 99. There is no Chrome OS 99. So I'm officially, artificially making it fail. It should jump me to my else. And here is just the point to test. Is, does it actually do what I intended to do, which is to hide the button? So we've got the splash screen. Flash screen ends. Here it is. Maybe it not is. The button goes away because our operating system check fails. I'll put that back to four. Did that work for everyone? Anyone need any help? All 
all I really tested here for was Android. I'm assuming Android. I ran it on Google Chrome, which is different. But what if later on, when we talk about migrating it over to iOS or Windows Phone and such, what if this check isn't exactly correct? What if I go look up on Pouch TV and, and it says there, uh, you need to be running on at least version iOS 6? Well, our check right here would um, would not quite work because then it would check. And even though we've called the variable Android ver int, this is just saving the version of the operating system. And uh, Cordova tells us that we'll get results something like this. If it's Android, we'll get these numbers. Blackberry would give something like this, 6. If it's the browser, it'll give that number. If it's in an iPhone, it'll give those numbers. And then perhaps Windows phones will look a little different. So the kind of check that we did is very clumsy. I really perhaps only want to focus on, at the moment, Android version. So we have the ability with device to also check, are we on Android? If we're on Android, then check the compatible version. If we're on iOS, check its compatible version. We can check for every operating system to make sure that this is shown or hidden properly. We have uh, platform, device.platform. Device.platform will give us Android, iOS, etc. So perhaps should we check, should we be checking, are we on Android? If yes, then is it the proper version of the operating system? If yes, then show it or hide the button. So there's several ways here to do this sort of logic. Do we want to check, are we on Android, and are we higher than a certain version? Do we want to check first the general, op any operating system, and then based on that, make decisions of, of operating, of um, version numbers? So what we'll do is, we're going to back up, and OK, we've checked Android version. That assumes it's an Android version. Uh, let's make another variable to check the operating system itself. So at the end of line 10, I will actually make that a comma so that I can continue to use that variable keyword. Next line, we'll call this, um, maybe we'll call it OS name. Set that equal to device dot platform. Yes, device.platform. Console output. Operating system name. that I'm doing here, basically I only want to deal with um, Android. The Chrome browser, for example, should not have any trouble running Pouch. So you see what returns is browser. The operating system that I'm on is browser, so it should basically ignore the rest of the OS check. So we can check for multiple things at once within this if statement. I'm going to check, OK, it's got to be Android, and then deal with greater than version 4. So we're going to check for two things at once within these parentheses. The way I like to separate this up is uh, sort of like a, a math equation where we put parentheses around things so that those things execute properly before then they get manipulated otherwise. So I'm going to wrap 
another set of parentheses around around that because I want that statement to evaluate. I don't want it to accidentally conflict with what else I'm about to write. So in parentheses, th this unit here will evaluate um, properly. I'm going to back up and put in another pair of parentheses. I want one statement to execute and I want this statement to execute, and based on these two, if these both are true, then use the app as normal. If any one of those is false, um, then we can hide it. So now what we're going to do is check OS name equals equals quotes Android. This is a this is a string. Operating system Android equal double equals right there. So instead of a uh, setting the variable on the left based on what's on the right, uh, now we're checking for equality. And between the two parentheses, I will put a double ampersand. That's basically and. I want to check. Is the operating system currently Android and is it greater than 4? If it is, great. Have it all run properly. Or else hide it. that. Right, so here, actually, it still hit it um, because the coding is correct. There's no syntax error or anything like that. This is actually a logic error. I had assumed, okay, if it's Android and version 4, then show the, um, show the button. This has to, both of these have to evaluate to true, actually. This one has to be true, and this one has to be true to be in this first block. If any one of these is false, the whole thing becomes false, and it jumps down to else. So it hit it. One of these was currently false. Oh, its name was not equal to Android. It was browser equals Android? False. Is it Android version greater than 4? True. One of them was false, so it jumps down to the else. So here is more of a logic error than a syntax error. So you're seeing here when we have to check for multiple statements of truth, the logic of it could be more complex. Okay, so a better way perhaps to check this instead of at the same time is to first check the operating system. If then it's the proper operating system. Then further check the operating system version. So we're going to rewrite this if statement. I'm going to comment it out, this whole one here, for the moment. And instead what I want to do is set up my if else again. And this time os name equals Android. I'll jump to my else part first. Console log. Let's say not Android OS. 
and what I would do to deal with that. If it is the Android OS, okay, then we will check this stuff here for the version number and such. So this will be another if, else. The one inside of this section is basically then what we had previously, so I suppose we can copy and paste. And I'll write it, Android ver int greater than or equal to 4. The result of that, I guess we can say, is Android and is greater than version 4. Just to show this, console log is Android but not compatible version. And we'll hide the button. So based on that, I'll give it a quick shot to run this. In the browser again, it should then display the button because uh, we, get a, we get over to this part. The first if else jumps down to else with nothing really happening. It works as normal in the browser, so it works as normal. Now, if I were to test this on a device that is Android and with the incompatible version, so I get right away here, not Android OS, so leaves it alone. Again here, I'm only thinking in terms of Android. Well, we are eventually also going to talk about um, and work a little bit with iOS and such. So I'm going to take a quick detour to look up on PouchDB.com. What version then of Android of, I, of iOS do we need in order for um, Pouch to work? Uh, Pouch says for Android it's four and up. We need to see what it is for. For iOS, and I suppose also Windows and Blackberry and such. So where would they put that at? Maybe guides. So just to uh, get this done, if anyone sees it on the website, let me know because I'm also trying to find it myself. We need to look up what version of iOS is Pouch compatible with. Here we go. 
Android 4 and up, and iOS 7 and up. So that's exactly what I was saying, that simply having a check is greater than 4, equal to or greater than 4, would have accidentally worked for iOS 5 and 4 and 6. And Pouch is not compatible with those older versions of iOS. So we should further check for iOS compatibility to deactivate the feature for iOS people. So when we went, when we created the variable Android ver int, we were again short-sighted thinking only of Android. We should be thinking about also versions of any operating system. So actually, we should probably call that instead of Android ver, we should just call it OS ver version of the OS. And in this case, there's only three places where we need to change that. But if we had 30 places to change that, that's where search uh, replace comes in, control H. What I want to do is replace any instances of Android ver to be OS ver. Yes, it's only three. I can see them all right there, but if they were spread out through all, throughout my whole document, uh, this would be much better. Actually, there's yeah, there's three. So uh, I'll do replace all. These are called OS ver now. seem to also have gotten the other one uh, where it was Android ver int. That one became OS ver int. That's, that's a good consequence of that. Um, although that could be overstepping bounds, depending. Maybe I still needed that other old name, but it did actually make seven changes, not just the three that I thought. So if that was too overreaching, let me undo that, it would have been better to um, perhaps choose match whole word only. Only replace instances of Android ver and nothing else because you see it's also going to replace um, Android ver int. Let's see the difference there. Yeah, so that would just do three. So Android ver became OS ver and I still would need to do Android ver int. So I'll take that back, but I'm just showing you that um, that's the value of having match whole word only. In this case, actually, I do want everywhere that it's showing Android ver to become OS ver. It'll be seven times, so I'll replace that. So make sure your code looks like that. Now we've got OS ver equals device version. OS ver int is the parsed version. Console outputs. And then, of course, most importantly, that your if statement is using the new, the new idiom. The point of that is that we also want to take into account um, iOS users. They need to be up at least 7.1 and up. We checked down here. Okay, if we've got an Android version, do this. We then also need to check, well, what if instead, it's not Android version, but what if it's an iOS version? So if else is simply two choices. If it's this, do that, or else, do that. Two choices. But we can easily rewrite this to have multiple choices. Check if it's this, or else maybe check if it's that, or else check if it's this one, or else check if it's that one. And then a final, if all else fails, something. So here's where we're going to rewrite line 29 to be else if. And within here, I can make my next check. If what? If OS name equals equals iOS. What's that? Oh, OS name, yes. So we're checking if OS name is iOS within this section here we will have another one of those ifs, because now we're within, if we've gotten into this part, now we can deal with version numbers. So I'm just going to copy that whole if chunk. 
and replace this console, not Android, iOS. Replace that. And now we've got OS ver int greater than 7, greater than or equal to 7. The patch says how it works on uh, iOS 7 and up. Might as well then change this output is iOS and is greater than version 7. Console log is iOS, but not compatible. And it'll just do the same thing. It'll hide that button. We've got our first check. Is it Android? No. Do a second check. Is it iOS? Yes. We can have multiple of these else if statements to check the possibilities. Switch and case could work could work very similar as well. So we've got Windows Phone. Let's just say for the moment we'll target those. Operating systems. And I'll compile it. It should work in the browser because these are only to deactivate based on a version of a known operating system. If it's unknown, it'll just let it go through. If I fully wanted to test it, again, I would raise these numbers pretty high up. Um, that will force the uh, else condition. So there's the button. If I were to run it on my real device, I would expect it also to run because it will be the proper version of Android. It'll be that it's an, it's the Android operating system and it's the proper version for and up. If I wanted to test this on a virtual device, I would have to create a virtual device with the operating system of Android 2. Um, that's another reason for virtual devices. You have a real device, but your real device, you're not going to be able to downgrade its OS. You can create older versions of the Android operating system on virtual devices if you want to test these issues of compatibility. All right, so I'm running it on a real device, this one right here. And I've got the OS ver 5.1, the parsed version 5, and it's uh, the OS name, Android. And I've gotten into a loop about is Android is greater than version 4, so it shows the button. This commented code then is obsolete. I've improved upon it here, so I will remove it. And um, 
I would then further need to go into cordova.apache.org and pouch.com to then figure out the other operating systems. What version do I need for Windows Phone? What version do I need for Blackberry? Etc. What's the string that I need to check for? What's the operating system name? To, to fully know that, you know, I, I believe I can get that out of uh, Cordova website and then of course test it on a real device. But here at least we've covered two operating systems and we are activating the ability or deactivating deactivating the ability for pouch if it's not compatible. Any questions at this point? Mm -hmm. So if it's not the device, just run your regular browser on desktop, it should still show the button. It should still show the button, yes. It didn't go through the line. No, it did because the very first thing that happens is we check OS. Right now, if it's on the browser, OS becomes browser. So it'll say, is browser equal to Android? No. So it jumps to the next part. Okay, is browser equal to iOS? No. So then there's nothing else to do. The if statement ends. We didn't include an else. We didn't include an else, so it just... We didn't do anything for a final if all else fails. True. But that's fine because we uh, assume that it's compatible, that it does work. It would be better to have some more if-else checks and a final else, but for our purposes, because we're targeting Android and iOS, and then testing in the browser, I think it's fine at this point. So, the last round, the navigator's fresh screen will be, no matter it's on the device, this code is running, is that right? This is self-contained, yes. So, mm -hmm. any... The one? Yes, I know. This, this is completely independent of that. Mm -hmm. This is self-contained here. So anything that follows, it, it doesn't have nothing to do with this. So no splash screen. That means right now, don't have splash screen. This is hiding the splash screen. As soon as the project loads on the device and the Cordova API is ready, hide the splash screen. Hide the splash screen. Mm -hmm. To show the splash screen as long as necessary and then hide it. Okay, so um, that is dealing with with um, version numbers. Um, I'm going to switch gears over then to some new aspects. We'll take our first break, uh, and then we'll uh, make sure this is working, and then we'll add some new things. Uh, social sharing and emailing. Our app will be able to send an email to the developer, for example, and we'll be able to activate the features for social sharing, such as being able to tweet from our app, maybe to tweet our classes or to tweet something from, or to post to Facebook or Instagram or whatever, social sharing. So at 7.03, we'll take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 7.13.